morning. So let's get into the word this morning. Uh, today is the end. The, <laughs> the end is near, right? <laughs> the way that came out, man, that, that, that just totally came out wrong here. It's the end of our sermon series. We have been in a, a series for the past six weeks called The Deep. Uh, we have been examining what it means and what it looks like to go into a deeper relationship with Jesus. Uh, this has been a series, hopefully, to encourage you uh, not to be satisfied with sporadic encounters with him, uh, but rather, hopefully, this has inspired you and encouraged you to make an ever-deepening pursuit of him a lifestyle in which you live daily. Let me tell you, this ever-deepening relationship with Jesus that he wants and desires to have with you, it depends upon you. It does. It depends upon you. Jesus, he's already done all that he, he needs to do, more than that what he needs uh, to do to be able to make that possible. Now it's up to us. Are we going to do whatever it takes to be able to grasp hold of and lay hold of this uh, pursuit of Jesus? Are we going to uh, do whatever it takes? Are we going to go wherever it takes? When you make that intentional choice, you will discover, I promise you, that nothing will compare to going deeper with Jesus. There is no form of entertainment. There's no form of euphoria. There's nothing that is better than going deeper with Jesus because he desires to go in as deep as you possibly can, I believe that the journey to the deep is not only practical, but it is attainable. It is attainable to have a more intimate relationship with him. And that's what we've been looking at, those practical, attainable things that we can do. Uh, things like being in his word. His, his word takes you deeper. Amen. When you love his word and you learn his word and you live his word, it takes you deeper. Uh, serving takes you deeper. Serving, it maximizes his ability in our lives and it minimizes me, which is a match made in heaven. When there's more of him in me and less of me in me, you cannot go wrong. Amen. And you're the same way, all right? The simplicity of simple prayer takes us deeper. Asking, oh, can I go deeper? Oh, asking, can I be closer? It doesn't have to be complicated. It's just seeking his presence over provision and it's willing to stand there and knocking and not being satisfied until you are there. Understanding and not underestimating sacrificial giving, not underestimating the impact that it has on me, not underestimating the investment that it is in me and not underestimating the inclusion that I'm a part of. It takes me deeper. This morning, as we conclude the series, though I'm driven towards this concept, and it might be just possibly the most powerful aspect of them all, that we need to be people of bold belief. Bold belief. Believing God for more than what you can see right now. Today, we're going to return to where it all began. Six weeks ago, we were in Ephesians chapter three, and we're going to return to that exact same scripture. We're going to add a couple of verses than what we read a couple of weeks ago. But I want you to look at me with me to Ephesians chapter three. I'm going to start in verse 16. The apostle Paul, he writes to the church in Ephesus. He says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ Jesus will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. And then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able. 
Look at your neighbor. Neighbor, tell him he is able. Say it like you believe it. He is able. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. If I were to give this message a title this morning, it would be this. It's more than a dream. It's more than a dream. Let me pray for the word this morning. Father, I thank you for the word that you have given us today. This is your word that is speaking to us. Lord, allow our hearts to be open, our ears to be tuned in, our minds ready to receive. And Lord, change us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question this morning. Are you believing boldly for anything today? Anything at all? I certainly hope you're believing boldly for something in your life. Maybe for an answer that is larger than what your own wisdom can manufacture. Maybe a provision that is larger than anything that you can can produce on your own. Maybe for a hope that is bigger than what you can naturally see right now. Maybe it's something just as simple and as powerful as what the scripture text talks about is to to know him and to know how wide and how long and how high and how deep his love truly is. But I hope that you have a bold belief for something this morning, something that will not happen unless God shows up. That will not happen unless God pours out. And that will not happen unless God intervenes. And that is what Ephesians chapter three is encouraging us to be. And if we're not already, to become. To be people who will boldly believe, not for what is naturally possible, but for what, or or not for what even makes sense, but for what is supernaturally possible. Achieved not by my ability, but because his ability, what God can and will do in spite of me, because his spirit, his ability, has the ability to work through me. Look at Ephesians chapter three this way. God wants you to have an imagination. He desires us to have a dream, so to speak. To have a dream that it is so big that except by him, that unless he is in it, then it's nothing but a fantasy. But because when he is in it, there is no cap. Because when he is in it, there is no limit. He can and he will accomplish infinitely more. Some of you know this verse very well. Maybe you have it memorized in another translation where he says exceedingly abundantly more than what you can ask for, than what you can think of, and definitely what you can imagine. When God is in it, it's more than a dream. Through him, it's a reality. It does not matter how crazy, how off the wall, how unrealistic that dream that you have is. In fact, your family might think you're absolutely crazy that you've gone loco in la cabeza, kind of crazy, you know? They might think that you are nuts. But let me tell you this morning, when your heart is in it, and when your heart aligns with his, there is no limit. When your desires align with his desire, it's completely possible. When your ideas align up with his purposes, it will not matter how big, it will not matter how impossible, it will not matter how expensive, it will not matter how how improbable that that dream is. Faith-filled, bold belief will yield, say will yield, will yield a bold response. 
I mean, he may respond in a way that you least expect at a time that you're, you're not even ready for it. When does anything he ever do for us convenient? But his response, it will be bold. His response, it will be real. Will you believe boldly for it? We need to be people of bold belief to be kept spiritually alive. When the church stops believing, the church stops being. Let me say that again. When the church stops believing, the church stops being. So this morning, I want to talk about four things to believe boldly for. Four things that will keep us grounded in him. Four things that will keep us in sync with him. Four things that will keep us spiritually alive and four things that will change us because when we boldly believe these four things, they will change the world. The first one this morning, believe boldly for a genuine move of God. At Crossroads, we believe boldly in a passionate pursuit of Jesus. We believe so boldly in front of it, about it. We, we put his name right in front of your face every single week so that as the moment you look up here and you're singing that song, it doesn't become about Pastor Christy. It doesn't become about Brother Chris. It doesn't become about Jesse on the drums. Hopefully your eyes go straight to Jesus because that's what it's about. It's about a passionate pursuit of Jesus. When you pursue, pursue Jesus with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, he shows up. I would think probably a good portion of us in this room, if not all of us in this room, by this point have probably heard about the events that are happening at Asbury University in Kentucky. Over the last 11 days or so, um, they have reminded me of something, though, that sometimes we believers, if we, if we don't forget about it, we definitely will underestimate that revival is a reality. Revival is a reality. And it's time for us as a church to believe for a genuine move of God. A move like we've never had before. A move of God that starts in our church and it moves into our homes and then it infiltrates our community. Amen. You see what, what happening, that's happening in Asbury University in Kentucky, it's, it isn't the first time that it's happened there. It isn't the first time they've experienced a genuine move of God. Early last week, I, I heard about something that, that happened there in 1970, many moons before I was even here. Amen. My understanding is that the events of, that happened at Asbury University in 1970 gave birth to something I hear you talk about quite often, Brother Dave, the Jesus movement. I always remember you talking about the Jesus movement that carried through the, the 70s and into the early 80s. And now 53 years later, here we are, and there is a green light once again. However, this time it's not just in Kentucky. I'm hearing reports of genuine moves of God from churches all over the United States right now. There's a sister church of ours in Brandon, Florida. They're experiencing these moves of God. They have multiple services. Last week, their one service flowed right into the other. There was no definitive stop or beginning. It just flowed. It started at 9 a.m. and it went straight till 2.30. Spontaneous baptisms, people coming in their Sunday's best, getting baptized, getting delivered from sin, atheists hearing the voice of God. They're running out of towels. There's, there's people weeping before the Lord. It's just this pure, genuine pursuit of him. And it didn't just stop on Sunday. There's staff meetings. It's, they're, they're talking about what they're going to do and how they're going to interact with this engagement with God and their church. And their staff meetings are turning into these deep and powerful prayer meetings. Multiple services all throughout the week where there's tangible healing. There's signs and wonders being shown. And, the, and it's just this beautiful, genuine move of God. And that's just one church that I've happened to hear about. 
a genuine move of God. It's not marked by weirdness or flakiness. It's not marked by shouting and uncontrollable laughing and gold dust falling down from the sky onto the seats and, and running around the room. A genuine move of God is marked by dropping everything that we have that's important to us and saying, there is nothing more important than you right now, Jesus. I'm hungering after you right now, Jesus. I'm hungering more than anything else right now, Jesus. And there is a genuine move of God that is available. If it's available in Kentucky and if it's available in Brandon, I've got to believe that it's available in Avon Park. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's available in Avon Park. He's waiting for a church that is willing to be revived. He's waiting for a church that's willing to humble themselves and pray. He's waiting for a church that's willing to boldly proclaim by faith. And we have the green light. We're giving you the green light, Holy Spirit, for your outpouring in this time. For your outpouring over our church, for your outpouring over our community, for your outpouring over our county, for your outpouring over our country. Boldly proclaim by faith that there is a green light for a revival that has not been seen in this property here for over 70 years. It's been a while since I've heard about the, 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 the revival that used to happen here at Crossroads back in the, in, in the 50s. Not to be rude or, or crude about it, but the generation that, that was here at that revival, there's few of, fewer and fewer of those people that are left. But I remember 15, 20 years ago hearing about how, how they would gather outside of these windows, these windows they used to open. I could show you a picture that showed the style of windows that we used to have on this building. And they used to open. And people, they would stand up and line up outside both sets of windows because that breezeway wasn't there. And they would be outside these windows and they'd be listening to the word and they'd be, they'd be worshiping. And it was a revival that was happening. Will we boldly believe for a genuine move of God where miracles cannot be denied, where tangible healing takes place, where signs and wonders manifest for all to see? Will we be boldly believe for a genuine move of God that will be marked by repentance, by worship, by seeking him? where true holiness becomes a way of life, where every high thing is torn down and every stronghold falls down in our life. Will we boldly believe that this sanctuary will be filled with people, not because they're, they're here for anything else, but a, they're just because they're hungry for God and they're hungry for a move that cannot be contained for a 90-minute period of time between 10 a.m. and 11.30 it cannot be contained in that 90 minutes. It cannot be contained in two services, three services. It cannot be contained. It's a genuine move of God, and it's up to us. And we must make up our time today that we want a move of God more than anything else. When we make up our mind, though, get ready. There's a thing that happens. It's called spiritual warfare. It's called spiritual warfare. Critical people, they will show up in your life, I promise. Insecure people, they're going to show up. Insincere people, they're going to show up. And the enemy, he's going to show up faster than you can say opposition. Boldly believe that as opposition rises, that every critical spirit, every insecure person, every opposing voice, it would be muted. That the only voice that will be heard would be the voice of the Lord. Amen. That ulterior agendas would be pushed aside. And the only agenda that would be promoted is the agenda of Jesus boldly believe for a genuine move that cannot be misunderstood. It can't be misunderstood for being about me. It cannot be misunderstood about being any leader in this church. It cannot be misunderstood about being about the worship team. It can only be implied that this is about Jesus. And that's where a genuine move is. It's where Jesus will be praised. It's where Jesus will be glorified and he'll be lifted high. Believe for that. Secondly, this morning, believe boldly for genuine change in people. Genuine change. Another thing that we boldly believe here at our churches is that people, they are our purpose. We, we love people. We, we accept people where they're at and they matter to us. They matter to us because they matter to God. And sometimes in the, just the craziness of our lives and in the, the complexity of life, it, it can be easy to forget this, is that people are a reality. People are a reality. 
when there's so much to believe God boldly for, it's completely possible that people can never even come to our mind. But I know for a fact that there is nothing else that will align your heart with his quite like making people your passion as well. You know, the, the world of 2023, I don't think we'd get much argument in this room today in saying that people are looking for a genuine encounter, but they're looking for it in some weird, messed up, and upside down places. But they're looking for something that is real. They're looking for something that will meet them where they are at. They're looking for something that is going to change it all. So I'm challenged this morning that along with a genuine move of God to let us be a church that boldly believes for a genuine change that the people are seeking. Let us boldly believe that Crossroads is a place where people are going to come and they're going to surrender their life to Jesus. Let us boldly believe that Crossroads is a place where people, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us boldly believe that this is a place where God shows up and people, they will see the light. Let us boldly believe that this is a place where people find genuine change, that they'll find it on Sundays and they'll find it on Wednesdays. They'll find it on Tuesdays and they'll find it on Thursdays. They might even find it on a Monday afternoon. Let us believe. It's time to start boldly believing and declaring it out loud that in Avon Park, that chains of sin, they are breaking. That repentance, it is happening on our city streets. That drug addicts, they are being set free. That alcoholics, they're putting the bottle down and the prostitutions and the prostitutes, they're leaving where they're at right now. That the demon possessed, that they are being delivered and the oppressed are being set free. It's time to boldly believe that as people drive by our church, as people walk by our church, as people cut across this property like they do dozens of times every single day, you think I'm making an exaggeration? I'm not. As they cut across this property, that the power of God comes upon them and the power of God transforms them. That there is a stretch of road on this city block that goes from, from Will Height there, where am I? Will Height over there and Savage Street over there. And it doesn't matter whether you're on Central Avenue or Glenwood Avenue, that when you walk by, it would be like Saul that was on the Damascus Road. That they're, 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 they're at the point where they're farthest from God is what they could possibly be. They're walking to wherever and there, there's an intent on their heart that's only gonna take them even further from him. But when they walk by, Jesus comes and his light is seen, his voice is heard. And as Jesus is revealed, their lives will be changed. If you serve Jesus, and you have served Jesus, you know that genuine change is possible you know it's possible. Just look at your life. Look at the way that you were. Look at what, what you once did. And then look at how he intervened and start believing boldly how he wants to do the same thing in other people. Third thing this morning, believe boldly for genuine growth among us. Believe boldly for genuine growth. We boldly focus on growth at Crossroads. Growth is our mandate. And there's a lot of spiritual people that would look at a word like that, oh, growth, and be like, oh, that church is only concerned about building up their kingdom. And though that is not true, it is true, it is our concern of ours that we reach as many people as we possibly can. Because that's the point of all this, to gather together and to grow together and to become as strong and as many serving and pursuing Jesus as we possibly can. You know, as Jesus was about to ascend to heaven, he commanded his faithful followers to grow, to go into the world and make disciples. Discipleship is a reproductive act. It is a reproductive act. After Jesus ascended to heaven, there's 120 or faithful that are, are gathered together and they're never meant to remain at 120. And at the first revival 
ever. There's an outpouring in Jerusalem 50 days after Jesus uh, uh, it, it has been crucified. And 120 becomes 3,000. And then maybe it's a, a few days later, maybe it's a few weeks later. The Bible's not specific, but then there's a tangible healing. There's a crippled man that's over 40 years old. He's been at the temple gates begging for money, begging for handouts, begging for whatever he can get his hands on for a long, long, long time. And when there's nothing that they are able to give him personally, Peter says, I will give you something. And he heals the man through the power of Jesus. And it spurs another act of growth. 3,000 becomes 5,000. When severe persecution begins to attack the church in Jerusalem and the church is scattered abroad, it spurs yet another expansion of growth as, as the, the following of Jesus leaves Jerusalem and expands to the surrounding cities and eventually countries. I've been reading Acts lately and there's a, a lot of bold belief in the book of Acts. And growth was always right behind it. Sometimes it was thousands of people. Sometimes it was a household. Increase is a reality for those with bold belief. It's a reality not just for the spread of the gospel yesterday, but a reality for today. We are supposed to grow. We aren't meant to be the same yesterday or today as we were yesterday, and we're not just meant to be the same tomorrow as we are today. It's time to boldly believe in the growth of our church. And I'm not just talking about numerical growth. That might be the most obvious aspect of growth, but there, it's definitely the least important. What we're talking about is a growth in maturity. As we follow Jesus, we're supposed to mature as we progress. Apostle Paul, he, he proved that we're supposed to mature when he wrote a letter to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. He says, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you're still not ready for it. Can you read the disappointment in his words? He'd hoped that they had matured to a point to where they'd be ready for a stronger teaching. But here they are. They're still struggling with the same childish behaviors, mindsets, and actions that they always have. The essence of discipleship is walking with another as they mature in their faith. That's really all it is. Apostle Paul had a young man named Timothy to raise up and a young man named Timothy had the Apostle Paul to look up to. Revival and deliverance are not sustainable without discipleship. They are not sustainable without discipleship. Discipleship, it is a cyclical agent. People, they are drawn to a move of God. Look what's happening in Kentucky and all around the United States right now. People are genuinely changed by an encounter with Jesus. But genuine growth is the discipleship that keeps the process going. And that's why it's so important to boldly believe that we be agents of growth and for growth. That we live it ourselves and we forward it on by helping others grow. Boldly believe that you will be an agent for discipleship. A person, and that we will be a church that will help new believers gain a firm footing. That we'll be a church that will help mature believers continue to grow. Believe that this is a place of mentorship. That for every Paul that there's a Timothy, and every Timothy there is a Paul boldly believe that there'll be genuine growth among us. Finally, believe boldly for genuine hope in the world. At Crossroads, we boldly believe in hope. Hope isn't a dream. Hope is a reality. And when we believe boldly for hope, hope is that reality. Hope it is our anchor.
It's an anchor that keeps us connected to Jesus. If there has ever been a day that we need to be connected to Jesus, it's the day and age in which we now live. It's hard not to see and hard not to say that we live in dark days. A day and age of uncertainty where there's political and financial turmoil and uncertainty. A day and age that promotes confusion where the truth, it is skewed. A day that is filled with anxiety and depression where those that appear to be happiest. I just saw just a news headline that, I I, I mean, I never even would have considered them a celebrity. They were married to a singer, but they they committed suicide. A famous singer, I guess. He was a country singer. Committed suicide. The appearance of happiness, have it all, but yet there's, there's this deep depression. Days that seem to have only one attribute, and it's hopelessness. These may be the kinds of days that have only been seen once before in the days of Noah, but that does not mean that these cannot be days that are filled with genuine hope. Because the enemy, he he wants to remove you from hope. That's what the enemy wants to do. If he can keep you from hope, then he can get you to anywhere he wants you to be. But it's hope that keeps us motivated and moving forward. It's hope that keeps us grounded in Jesus. It's hope that that keeps us secure in our faith. When we have those days, how many of you have maybe had one of those days this week? One of those days of danger, trial, toil, and snare. One of those days of difficulty. One of those days that you'd rather not have again. That's when we need hope a hope that is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And that is a hope to believe boldly for. That's what Romans chapter 5, verse 5 describes as a hope that does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out. It's been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. This is what the world needs now more than ever. Hope that is a constant. Hope that is secure. Hope that comes through. And hope that is genuine because it is God that has supplied it and nothing else. This is what believing boldly for a move of God is going to do. This is what believing boldly for a change in people is going to do. This is what believing boldly for genuine growth among us is going to do. Believing boldly is going to produce genuine hope in the world. It's going to produce genuine hope in the world. I don't believe it's a coincidence that over the past week or so, I've seen less complaining by Christians on social media. Not no complaining. We're not going to get carried away here. There's always something that we find to complain about. But as there's been reports of revival sweeping the land, I don't find it a coincidence that hope is coming along with it. Start believing today for hope in our community. Start believing today for hope in the homes that are in your neighborhood. Start believing today for hope in the lives of those that you interact with. Because genuine hope can be found believe boldly for it. Believe boldly for it. There was a time when Jesus, he was alive and he was in his ministry and he looked to Simon who would later be called Peter and he tells him in Luke 5, put out your net into the deep. Put out your net into the deep. Let it out for a catch. The series called The Deep, where we want to go with Jesus, it it can be a place of uncertainty. And it's a place where everything that we want and desire, but it can be, sometimes we don't know what it is we're getting into. It's a place where when we let out our net, we don't know what it is that will be pulled back. We just send it out and we believe that he's going to allow into that net exactly what it is that we need in our life. 
This morning, we have an opportunity to let out our net. And I'm sure that there's a variety of things that we all hope find their way into our net as we let it out. For some of us, it's, it's, a, it's a provision that we need. For some of us, maybe it's a protection that we're looking for this week. Maybe, maybe it's, it's a healing, or maybe we just needed the comfort of his presence in our life. But for all of us, there's something that we're, we're hoping that finds its way into our net. Yet what I'm feeling so strongly about today is that what God wants to do and desires to do in this season, the season of our church, the season of our history in which we now live, that we are all in this morning, is to let out our net and boldly believe that God is about to do something real. Believe boldly for him to move in this sanctuary. Believe boldly for him to change this community. Believe boldly for him to help us grow. Believe boldly for him to give us hope in seasons of hopelessness. It's more than a dream. It's a reality. It can and it will happen with bold prayer, bold action, and bold belief. This morning, I'm not going to do this normal head bows, eye closed thing. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to keep it plain and simple this morning. I'm believing for a genuine move of God. A God that moves in my life. A God that moves in my church. And a genuine move that's going to move in this community. I'm believing for a genuine change in people. God reveals himself to the people that you interact with, your co-workers, your neighbors, your family members, those people that just drive you crazy. And if you're in that same boat with me this morning, would you stand up in this place today? It's not about forcing it but it is about pressing in and bold belief. This morning, if you've got to go, I I understand. But I'm going to pray and then we're just going to press in. We're just going to press in. Let me pray this morning. Jesus, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your word. Lord, let us be cut to heart today. Let us be inspired today. Let us be driven today. Let us be unsatisfied with anything less today than to be people of bold belief. Lord, let this be the day, I pray, that everything changes in the name of Jesus.